Born in the small town of Waianae, former UFC featherweight champion Max Holloway's early life wasn't an easy one. Raised by a single mother battling addiction in one of the highest crime rate cities in America, Holloway set clear goals early on that whatever the course his life took, he wouldn't become a statistic. What up guys, Shaquille Madjuri here for Combat Culture, and before we begin, just a teensy weensy reminder, if you can please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit that like button, those acts go such a long way to helping us do what we can here at Combat Culture. Now, without further ado, ahead of UFC Fight Island 7, here is the history of Max Holloway. Blessed's path to UFC gold began back in 2007 during his sophomore year of high school when a friend convinced him to give kickboxing a try. The striking arts, however, transitioned quickly to mixed martial arts for the Hawaiian Samoan fighter who started his MMA journey training at Jesus Salud Boxing and Gracie Technics, the gym he still calls home all these years later. Still just 20 years old, Holloway entered the UFC as one of the promotious youngest ever signings on the back of a scant 4-0 unbeaten record. That included victories over Kai Kamaka Sr., protege Bryson Kamaka, as well as multiple strike force vet and true OG of the Hawaiian scene, Harris Sarmiento. Just north of his 19th birthday, a 2-0 Max Holloway nabbed a split decision win over then 27-year-old Sarmiento, a 52-fight veteran, to pick up the X1 lightweight championship. Holloway may have been inexperienced, he may not have even been able to buy a beer legally, but by the time he stepped into the octagon, it was clear that he had all the talent in the world to become one of MMA's best fighters. Nonetheless, that first step into the octagon would be an exceptionally hard one. Fresh off a unanimous decision win over Eddie Rincon, Holloway made his 2012 UFC debut against none other than future interim lightweight champion Dustin Poirier. The diamond did well trading heavy shots with Holloway standing, and as the youngster started to find his rhythm, uncorking flying knees and spinning back kicks, Poe slammed him to the mat where his grappling skills quickly took over the bout. Holloway's first loss took just 3 minutes, 23 seconds, via a mounted triangle armbar. The rest of 2012, however, was much kinder to the future king of 145. Holloway returned to the cage just four months later for a unanimous decision win over Pat Schilling, and only two months after that to knock out highly touted Karetika Justin Lawrence. He then wrapped up the year with a split decision win over the power accursed Leonard Garcia, bringing his record to a sterling 7 1 just a little two years after going pro. 2013, unfortunately, wouldn't hold nearly the same highs. Holloway started the year with a highly contested split decision loss to Dennis Bermudez. Despite outlanding Bermudez in each of the first two rounds, two judges awarded the fight to the menace, and shortly afterward, Holloway would suffer the most notorious loss of his career. In August of 2013, way down on the prelims of a UFC fight night featuring Chael Sonnen's light heavyweight submission of former Pride legend Shogun Hua, Max Holloway battled future UFC superstar Conor McGregor. While Holloway did well to somewhat keep pace with the punching output of McGregor early, he couldn't match the Irishman's kicking game and was at an obvious deficit when it came to raw power. That physical disparity played out to the point that, despite McGregor tearing his ACL mid-fight, the SBG Ireland talent was able to control the bout with bigger strikes and even some takedowns and top control. More so than any bout before, Holloway appeared to be truly outclassed. Whether losing every round to McGregor and even taking a 10-8 in the process lit a fire under Holloway, or whether the years of training just really started to click, only he knows for sure. But following that defeat in Boston, the Hawaiian entered a period of nearly unparalleled UFC success. Starting with a second round KO of Will Chope in 2014, which netted a knockout of the night bonus, Holloway went unbeaten over 4 years and 13 fights, culminating in a pair of victorious title fights against all-time great featherweight legend Jose Aldo, and a title defense against ever-dangerous top contender Brian Ortega. In that time, Holloway finished former lightweight king Anthony Pettis, current top contender Charles Oliveira, 
fan favorites, Cub Swanson and Andre Feely, and even current boxing sensation Cassius Clay Collard. His first couple of years in the UFC may have come with their ups and downs, highs and lows, but by the time 2018 came to a close, Holloway had seemingly surpassed every expectation that could have been set for him as a fresh-faced 19-year-old picking up regional belts in Honolulu. Years of hard work, dedication, and a persistently technical, high-volume boxing game had turned Holloway into the best featherweight on the damn planet. All that success left Holloway with a chance to chase bigger things, most notably an opportunity to rematch the man who gave him his first ever loss inside the cage, Dustin the Diamond Poye. Poye vs. Holloway 2 took place on April 13, 2019, the main event of UFC 236. Owing to the ongoingly sparse fighting schedule of lightweight champion Habib Nurmagomedov, Poye and Holloway were given the chance to face off for the UFC's interim lightweight championship. The Louisiana native and ATT talent, Poye had made the move to 155 earlier, following his own decisive defeat at the hands of, you guessed it, Conor McGregor. And much like Holloway's post-notorious run, the following period represented a time of unprecedented success for the Diamond. He racked up eight wins with just one loss on his way to the interim belt, including back-to-back -back KOs of Justin Gaethje and Eddie Alvarez. For Holloway, the jump in weight may have been his first toe dip into one of the UFC's deepest weight classes, but for Poirier, the fight was part of a long progression into the frame of a power-punching lightweight. Although the fight between them ended with the same man getting his hand raised, it looked nothing like their first meeting. Holloway pressured Poirier with well-measured volume, working his jab, and looking for bigger opportunities to build combos behind it. Every time he tried, however, Poirier's deeply improved back foot boxing game walked him straight into hard counter shots. Holloway may have never been dropped over the course of their five rounds of fighting, but he was rocked badly on multiple occasions. When the final bell rang, more than 800 punches had been thrown, more than 350 landed. Holloway's bloody visage wore the brunt of that damage. While his battle for the interim lightweight title seemed every bit the kind of war that should require a long period of rest and relaxation, just a few months later Holloway was back at featherweight defending the 145 pound belt once again. This time against former lightweight champion and perennial contender Frankie Edgar. Holloway breezed by the answer at UFC 240 with most observers giving every round, even as one judge gave him just a narrow edge of 48-47. If his battle of attrition against the diamond had worn on him at all, trust me, Holloway wasn't showing it. Still, the year wasn't through with Blessed just yet. Holloway wrapped up 2019 with what was meant to be his fourth title defense, taking on Aussie sensation Alexander Volkanovsky. The former rugby player turned mixed martial artist had carved out a name for himself as a hard-punching, hard-wrestling featherweight, but in more recent bouts had fine-tuned his approach into that of a deaf technician, peppering opponents with low kicks and jabs only to coil like a spring into huge counter shots should they decide to rush through his lighter offense. Against Holloway, that approach worked. The bout wasn't without its controversy over the final score, but Holloway was clearly flummoxed by Volkanovski's range management, and by the time he did adjust, gaining the confidence to walk Volkanovski down and trade with him, he'd already let Alexander the Great outland him for three solid rounds. A strong finish down the stretch from Max wasn't nearly enough to pick up the win. Holloway had earned the right to an instant rematch through his nigh-unmatched years of quality wins. So, seven months later, the two men faced off again. This time, Holloway was clearly much better prepared. He started strong, blitzing Volkanovski out of the gate, making sure he wouldn't lose the early legs of a volume-based foot race to the judges. Yet, much like Holloway had to fine-tune his approach to win late rounds during their first fight, Volkanovski turned the tide as well. 
only to Holloway's dismay, he did it in round three, nabbing the last half of the fight on his way to yet another controversial decision victory. Those losses have left 2021's Max Holloway in a bit of a difficult place. He enters the new year just 29 years old and still a notable headlining talent for the UFC. But with Volkanovski atop the division, what it'll take to bring Holloway back to title contention remains unclear. Holloway has a fight night main event with Calvin Cater firmly on his horizon, headlining the UFC's first card of 2021. Will a win there be enough to get him back into the title conversation, or could Holloway drop his third straight fight and suddenly find himself well away from UFC gold for the first time in a long time? And that is all for today's video. Let us know in the comment section, folks. What do you think it's going to take for Max Holloway to get another crack at the UFC featherweight title? Obviously, he's got to get past an ultra game Calvin Cater. But uh, for my money, I think he's got to hope that Brian Ortega beats Alex Volkanovsky for the title. And then you can give Holloway the shot after that. Now, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at Shaq underscore Foo. That's Shaq with a K. And again, please, please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a like on this video. And most importantly, enjoy UFC Fight Island 7. We'll catch you next week with a whole lot of UFC 257 content. Peace. Yeah.